I'm so thirsty. Where did you get the water on <sighs> Mars? Dude, there's like five million cubic kilometers of ice at the poles. I just took some and melted it. Oh yeah, there it is. We've all dreamt of becoming a Martian. I mean, literally more than 18,000 people applied to be astronauts for 2017, which far surpassed the record from before, which was 8,000 people, and it was in the year 1978. And seriously, if you melted all the ice on Mars, it would create an ocean 35 meters deep over the entire planet, which might actually help us solve the second problem, finding something to breathe. Mars' atmosphere is very thin and made almost entirely of carbon dioxide, not the oxygen that us humans are used to breathing. But colonists could use electricity to split H2O into hydrogen and oxygen and then pump the oxygen into airtight structures and now you got a place to party. It's pretty cool, we're like partying on Mars. Not many people have done that. Uh, did the electricity just turn off? Wait, doesn't that affect the oxygen supply? Of course, food is another barrier because shipping animals to Mars would be complicated, so colonists would need to actually be vegetarian at first. And since plants require sunlight, the fact that Mars is about 1.5 times the distance from the sun that Earth is, the plants would only be receiving about half the average solar radiance. My green little Martian plant, I love you with my heart. I will care for you forever. Uh, Greg, how do you expect to keep a plant here alive on Mars when you've literally never kept one alive on Earth? What do you mean? Yes, I have. I love my... Oh my god, what? Scientists are currently studying how to grow plants on Mars. There's actually a Mars simulation way up in Devon Island, Canada, which is really, really far north, and it gets similar solar radiation as Mars. Findings from these experiments show that you actually could sustain plants on Mars and even grow things like tomatoes and carrots. Oh, carrots and tomatoes again. Great. Speaking of bringing stuff from home, it's pretty inevitable that at one point some machine or system would break down and require replacement parts. The shortest distance between Earth and Mars is around 55 million kilometers, but at times the planets are literally on opposite sides of the sun. Add to that the cost of launching equipment into space, which is around $10,000 per pound, and you can start to understand why getting spare parts to Mars would be a challenge. Oh hey Earth, um, we were just hoping we could get that new Zelda game on the Nintendo Switch. I heard it was really good. Yeah, so we can send that to you. Oh, for real? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, let's see. Mars is on the other side of the sun right now, so it will only take about a few years. Oh, whoa. Really? Yes, and actually it's gonna only cost you about $38,000. <gasps> Finally, there's also threats to your human health. Mars is much smaller than Earth, and its gravity is one-third of what we're used to on Earth, which is really good for jumping high and slamming dunks and making materials out of really light structures, but it's actually very bad for your body. We actually depend on the constant pressure of gravity to maintain our bones and muscles. This is why astronauts must undergo regular exercise in space to maintain their body health. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already watched our ASAP Science video on whether or not you have what it takes to get to Mars, go check that out. It's a fun time. And make sure you follow <laughs> us on social media and we will see you next week for a new video. Boop.